Welcome to Seven Mile Presbyterian Church online worship service. We are glad that you are here with us. And happy Mother's Day. We hope this is a blessed day for all of you. For many, this is a day of welcome celebration. And for some of us, it's a day that it's a little painful because we miss our moms. Still others are missing children on this day. But we at Seven Mile Presbyterian Church hold you all in spirit today. And God holds you every single day. Our first reading is from Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, and then we'll skip down to verse 15 and 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. I incline to your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Many times, my times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Hear again what God's word is saying to you this day. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the, the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So it's Mother's Day, and we have to kind of talk about moms for just a minute. Those who are still on earth, those who are missed. There were some elementary school children who were asked some questions about mom. Like, why do we have mothers? And the answers, she's the only one who knows where the scotch tape is and to help us out when we are getting born. What ingredients does God use in order to make mothers? Answer, God makes mothers out of angel hair and clouds and everything nice in this world and one dab of mean. This is a funny one that I've shared with some of you before. How did your mother meet your dad? Answer, 
Mommy was working in a store and Daddy was shoplifting. What did your mommy need to know about your dad before she married him? Answer. His last name. She had to know his background, like does he get drunk on beer? Is he a crook? Does he make at least $900 a year? And does he say no to drugs and yes to chores? Is there anything about your mom that is perfect? Answer, her children. And this is one of my favorites, although I have to tell you, I have a wonderful son-in-law and we have a really good relationship, but I still get a chuckle out of this one. Why did your mother marry your dad? Answer, my grandma says that mom didn't have her thinking cap on. So happy Mother's Day to all who are watching and listening and to the dads who were just like moms and to the aunts that filled important duties and to everybody that ever stepped into that role when they didn't have to. From our scripture lesson today, who do you follow and what troubles your heart? There's plenty of stuff to trouble us, especially lately. Everything surrounded by the COVID-19 is troubling. People without jobs, wars in foreign countries that affect us, crime feels like it's just outside our doors, the economy, jobs, politics, and then on a more personal level, trouble can haunt us in our families, our marriages, our children, our lives with parents, our lives because of our own health, there's plenty of trouble and worry to go around. And it feels like we're not really living in that community of faith that was gathered around the upper room with Jesus on the night that he was betrayed. We think we have the answers where the disciples had all the questions. And we think we are full of assurance where the disciples were kind of full of fear. Sometimes we are sure, certain, of those who are in or out. All of this can be troubling and confusing to us. The disciples were confused. They thought Jesus was going to be the king forever. And now he's talking about dying and it sounds like he means soon. As those confused and fearful disciples gathered around the table, Jesus talked openly with them. He knew that this might be his last chance to help them understand what was about to happen and what they would need to know after he was no longer with them. But his words were not really comforting to the disciples. They were troubling words. And so Jesus gathers them closer and he explains to them, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? It may seem kind of strange to hear these words in the middle of what's still considered to be Eastertide. We should be celebrating the risen Lord, not looking back to the gloom and doom of Holy Week, right? Many of us associate this particular passage with kind of the sadness of funerals not so much the joy of worship. But Jesus isn't only teaching the disciples how to deal with his impending death, nor was he just concerned with some far off, distant, heavenly future. He was preparing the disciples for carrying out the ministry that he had begun. The kingdom of God had broken into the world, and it would be up to Christ's followers to continue the work of bringing it to a full reality. So here we are, more than a couple of thousand years later, hearing these rich words, and they give us many ideas to ponder. But today we're gonna focus on just two ideas. The verse that gets quoted the most, the I am the way, the life, that verse. And then the one that really doesn't get quoted very much at all, Kind of get overlooked at times where we are to ask for things in Jesus's name. 
So Thomas says to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? And Jesus replies to him, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, for many of you, you grew up in church or you attended vacation Bible school or Sunday school. Maybe you didn't attend church until you were a full grown adult. And perhaps some of you who hear this message, maybe you haven't set foot in a church for years. And that's all okay. But you know the stories. We talk about grace and forgiveness and loving everyone. You know what it is to discern God's will for your life. Whether or not you know it at this very moment, God offers you grace before you need it and love even if you feel like you don't deserve it. Those early disciples didn't have it so easy. They were still caught up in the history of Judaism, thousands of years of that interwoven spiritual, spiritual and physical DNA. They thought they had it all figured out. They knew how the story was supposed to end and it wasn't supposed to end like this with the Messiah preparing for his own death. And they probably were starting to question themselves. Nobody wanted to say it out loud, but they were wondering, did we make a mistake? Did we follow the wrong guy? So when Jesus promises to come back later, and he tells them, you know the way, you know where I'm going, our good friend Thomas blurts out, you got to be kidding. We don't even know where you're going. How can we possibly know the way? I can just imagine Jesus kind of shaking his head. Thomas, Thomas, look me in the eye. Pay attention. I am the way. I'm the life. I'm the truth. Remember? The word was made flesh and that was Jesus. And he's telling them again, I am the life. You don't need to look for another Messiah. You got it right the first time. I'm the only way that you can get to the Father. So believe me. At that moment, Thomas might not have known how the story was going to end, but he would have recognized that Jesus wasn't declaring a threat. It wasn't believe me and only me or else, but it was a deep promise that was being offered. And a promise not only for the future, but a promise to be with the disciples here and now as they all kind of figure it out towards that ministry. Thomas must have been paying attention because we know that a week after the resurrection, he declares, my Lord and my God. That's what we all did when we joined the church. Whether our name is on a piece of paper in some dusty book somewhere, or whether our name is written in the Spirit of God, we all said, yes, I believe Jesus is the Son of God, and I want to commit my life to following him as my Lord and Savior. For some of you watching today, you're not going to be coming into the sanctuary of our beautiful church anytime soon. For whatever reason, perhaps you've been hurt by church or you feel unworthy, and I'm here to tell you, you are not, not at all. But it's scary walking into some place when you don't know anyone and you're really not sure of the reason to be there. And all of that is okay. You are loved just as you are this very minute. Even if we never see you in person at Seven Mile Presbyterian Church, you are part of our church family and our congregation. Your name on a list doesn't make that so. It's your name on God's heart that makes it so. So please know, my friends, that is the truth. Jesus is as sure as you are watching right now that you know he is the Son of God, and it is for sure that he loves you more than you can ever imagine. God has a plan for everyone, and we have committed our lives to that plan and to do the good works. Is it easy? No way. But he is the way. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, it was the beginning, not the end. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Jesus is present with us through the Holy Spirit as we grow deeper in faith. 
stronger in our love of God and neighbor and more and more like him in his footsteps. We are, as Peter wrote, living stones of a royal priesthood, God's own people, in order to proclaim the mighty acts of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people and now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy and now you have received mercy. Which brings us to that other verse, the one we kind of skip over at times when we ask for things that we want and we are to say in Jesus' name. Jesus tells his friends, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. We need to remember what it means to be a member of Christ's church, whether on paper or in our hearts. It gives us a lot of power. Christ expects great things from us, and that he has given us the Holy Spirit to accomplish that work. Jesus has healed the sick, cared for the poor, preached the good news, so we are to continue doing that ministry in his name until all the world has been introduced to God's saving grace through Jesus Christ. We are to bind up the brokenhearted, feed the hungry, and share God's love. Accepting Jesus as Savior is only the beginning of eternal life. Living into the grace that we have received then we grow more into a holy life. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people, Peter wrote. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. But it doesn't stop there. We have been given a purpose, a reason to keep moving forward on our journey. We are a people of God, and we ask through Jesus' name. Why are we here in this place and time as Christ Church? In order that we might proclaim the mighty acts of him who called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. All praise and glory to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, will you spend some time with me in prayer together? Let us pray. Lord, we pray for mothers, for those who were the nurturers, and for those who needed nurturing, for those filled with joy, and those who found joy elusive. We pray for the many women who want to be mothers, but for some reason have not gotten that gift. We pray for those who grieve because their mothers are no longer this side of heaven. God of grace, we pray for those whose lives have been turned upside down by the COVID-19 virus. Bring courage and hope to all who need it. May they remain connected to you in prayer. Loving shepherd, you lead and guide, you walk alongside, you prepare, you feed, and you call all of your sheep, even those of us who are lost, those who stray constantly, and those of us who stay close to your comforting staff. There are so many who walk in the shadows of fear and suffering and despair, and we lift up our concerns this day for those prayer requests that are heavy on hearts. We pause now and offer up all those prayers to you. Lord Jesus, keep calling us to make a difference in the world, to address hatred, to help the hurting, to bring justice in life towards the promised reign of Jesus Christ our Lord. This week is the 75th anniversary of VE Day, Victory in Europe Day, and we give you thanks for those who served. 
we owe a debt that can never be repaid. We are grateful for the lush green pastures of our lives when we pause now to offer our thanksgiving for the goodness that you bring us every day. We are thankful for the safe arrival of Patsy's great-grandson, Ezekiel. We give you thanks for his young life. For Jenny and Dale, who were celebrating 45 years of marriage, we are grateful. Father, we offer you thanks for each person that will hear this message. We thank you for this day and the opportunity to worship you right here and right now. You are the way, the truth, and the life. The one who taught us all to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words from Isaiah chapter 66. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Go now in the comfort and peace of the one who gave birth to us. Go in the assurance that the comforter is always with us. Go and give comfort and peace to others. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with every one of us now and forever. Go in peace knowing that you are loved. Amen.